Welcome to worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're really glad that you've joined us this evening for our Christmas Eve worship service. We invite you to have a candle or a flashlight for the last song in which we invite you to hold up the light to celebrate the birth of Christ into the world. Come, let us worship our living God.
now we're reading from Isaiah 9, 2 through 6. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke, and that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thanks be to God. Once Isaiah 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
This is a reading from Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. There's a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. From Luke chapter 2. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Bethlehem was packed full of people, all different people, all different professions. And of all the people in Bethlehem for the census, it was the shepherds who were first. Outside of Mary and Joseph and the animals, the shepherds were the first to hear the good news. How did that come to be? Was it an accident? Did it happen because they happened to be out at, late at night? And the angels chose lighting up the night sky with the celebration of the birth of Jesus. There must have been other people outside who could have seen the angels display, but we don't hear about any of them making their way that night to the stable. 
What was it about the shepherds that made them first on the scene? Maybe it was because shepherds by definition pay attention. A shepherd's job is to protect the sheep from danger and to do that well, they have to be watching for the unexpected, alert to the moment. And when they work at night, they have to learn to listen because their eyes can't see as far as during the day. So shepherds have developed a habit of attentiveness to the moment. And you know, it also feels as though the shepherds need to have a degree of curiosity, a willingness to investigate, as well as the courage to follow up on their hunches about danger. Curiosity and courage both served them well when they decided that they wanted to see this thing that the angels had proclaimed to go in search of a mystery, a baby born, a sign that the Messiah has finally come. I wonder who else was out walking in the vicinity of Bethlehem that night that missed the proclamation of the good news, too busy with their own comings and goings to be interrupted on the journey, or too afraid of something they didn't understand to open their consciousness to the possibilities of entertaining angels unaware. When the shepherds find the family, they talk about what they've experienced. And we are told that Mary ponders. She does that when the angel Gabriel visits her to tell her about finding favor with the Lord and bearing a baby who will be called the son of the most high. Mary ponders. Pondering isn't really a skill we develop much in our current environment. We just Google what we wanna know. But pondering, really being attentive to what is happening, what we are hearing and understanding from God, trying to understand what we don't understand. This is a trait that feels important. There is value in paying attention, in listening for God's call to us, particularly in those moments when we notice that the unexpected is happening. If Jesus were born into the world tonight, where do you think it would happen? Do you think you would notice? If the angels put stars in the sky to write out the good news and sang songs to fill up the night, would we hear the music? Would we join them in singing the songs? There's a story about the man who played the character Scotty on Star Trek. Beam me up Scotty was the line directed at him in almost every episode. The actor was James Doohan. He wasn't the most famous or the most popular character, not even close, but there were people who really enjoyed him and he got a good amount of fan mail. One particular letter came through from a woman who said she thought her life wasn't worth much. And Doohan heard a desperation in those words that made him reach out, contact her, invite her to events that he was holding in her city, making her promise she'd come back every year, which she did. Eventually she became an electrical engineer and she wrote him another letter to tell him what he had done for her had quite literally saved her. Someone asked him to reflect on his life. And he said, responding to that letter was the best and most important thing he had ever done. Paying attention, listening, having the courage to respond and the willingness to ponder, may those be ways to truly hear the good news and celebrate the birth of Christ this night and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, on this night of nights, open our hearts and our minds, our eyes and our ears, that we might hear you, that we might receive the love that you place in us, that we might experience your spirit calling us to connect and be connected in you. Help us with our struggles, that we might know we are not alone. Help us with our joys, that we might experience them together. Lord, in your mercy, we know that you hear us. You know what this year has been for us. You know the truth that is in our hearts this night. And as we lift it up to you, we pray with thanksgiving for your steadfast love, which endures forever. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, 
in the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.